Hi, it's Jackie Penner with Jacqueline Penner Art today. And uh, today I want to talk to you about some different types of watercolor paints because I've been getting lots of questions about that. And there are a few different types, so it's, it might be hard to know uh, what type you should get if you're just starting out. So um, I'm first of all going to show you what I use personally the most and that is this is one of my watercolor palettes that I use the most this is a very inexpensive plastic palette um, but I have in it artist grade watercolor paints and my favorite brand is this one this is called M Graham and Company and it is very good quality watercolor paint and one of the reasons I love it is because it has a lot of pigment it has the ability to make really vibrant colors and I have I have a few colors but I don't have a ridiculous amount I would say I probably have 10 or 12 different tubes of paint that are their colors from this brand and then I have a few others that I use too so that's what I have in this palette mostly <clears throat> also one of the main reasons I like that particular brand is because it's even though you put your paints in the, a palette like this or a different type of palette that you choose you let them dry like this but this particular brand doesn't get really hard and dried out because it's a good quality and it has actually I believe it's honey in it that keeps it sort of moist it, it's dry but it's also moist and so I have sprayed this a little not that long ago so you it has some probably a little bit of water in here but this is what it looks like when it's mostly dried out whereas I have a cobalt blue here you might be able to see it's not as glossy and that's because it's a different brand of paint I'm pretty sure it was this one that I put in there which is Windsor and Newton Cotman watercolors in cobalt blue so even though this is also a tube watercolor it's a different brand and it has a little bit of different texture to it um, and the other thing is the Cotman watercolors are a student grade Windsor and Newton also has an artist grade so if you're gonna be going to the art store you might want to know that you're gonna pay quite a bit less for the ones that are the Cotman watercolors but they're also very good so that's a, a good choice uh, I wanted to show you these because these are the smaller tubes of Windsor and Newton Cotman and um, yeah I think I think these are the tube sizes they come in so this has 8 mils and this has 21 mils and depending on how much you paint, you know, you might only need the small ones. Like this is a small tube of paint, but you're only going to squirt out, you know, this much into your palette. And this, we reuse this a lot. So it's going to last you a long time. And as long as you keep the lid on this tube, it will last for years and years. That watercolor paint is really nice that way you can... You don't really waste it you know you can keep reusing it for a long time so that's Windsor and Newton Cotman is a good choice and these are pretty inexpensive I just purchased these and they were I think I got them on sale but in Canada they were less than five dollars a tube so that is quite reasonable and you buy them by the individual tube so you pick what colors you want um, and I, I will just point out too that these are three colors that I would definitely start with if you are completely starting with nothing this is lemon yellow hue 
cobalt blue hue and permanent rose. So those three make a really nice set of primary colors. And uh, if you were just going to start with three tubes, you could start with these and you could actually make a full color wheel and mix all your colors. But I would add a few more, but you don't need tons, you know, eight or ten is, is going to get you a long way. If anybody happens to be watching and you want to ask me a question in the comments, you can do that. And um, I do have um, a couple of questions that I was already asked that were along the same line. So is there a certain brand that is better? Well, these are my favorites. There are lots of different types of watercolor paint and different brands though. But the main thing to know is that you buy the tubes individually. So choose what colors you think you want. And then you, you know, I would try one of, of a certain brand and then you'll know which ones are your favorite because it is a personal preference. But generally speaking, artist grade paint is gonna give you more pigment and more vibrancy in your paintings because it just has more pigment in it. Whereas the student grade paints have less pigment. And I wanna show you one other option, which would be this. So if you want to go to like Michael's or perhaps another type of store that isn't just for art supplies, you might find this, which is a box kit that has the tubes in it. And this one is the re <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So you can purchase something like this. This is about $20 in Canada, so probably less in the United States. And it's a really good way to start if you just don't know if you want to invest in more expensive paint. You know, this is going to get you started and it's going to get you being able to try out watercolor and that's definitely a good option too. Um, these just, they are student grade and they won't have, probably you won't be able to get them as bright as you will be able to get other paints, but still a good place to start. And there is another option. <clears throat> One, um... Other thing that I like to use, especially if I'm going to be traveling or sometimes I like to just throw a few of my watercolor supplies in my purse if I'm going to be going somewhere for the weekend or just out for a drive um, because believe it or not you can even paint in the car. I've done it <laughs> or at a picnic table or something like that at the beach. So what I have here, this is also Winsor & Newton Cotman watercolors, but these are called a pan set. So it's a travel sketch, sketch box. I think they call it a traveler's sketch box. And there are a couple of different models. They don't necessarily look exactly like this one. Some of them are more just like a straight rectangle, but it's the same idea. So they have a set of double primaries in here with a couple other colors. So you have two yellows, actually plus a third yellow. This is kind of messy, watercolors get messy when you use them, but um, we have two different yellows, a warm and a cool, three different reds actually. These are, you could call this a brown, but it's, it's a warm red a cool red and an orangey red. Then you have two different blues, a warm blue and a cool blue. You have two or three different greens here and burnt umber. So this is a super handy thing to have and it comes with this little paintbrush that's for watercolor. And uh, yeah, so you can grab this little kit, grab a bottle of water to bring with you, a paper towel, and you can mix your paint right on here. It has 
this little palette that sticks on the side so you can extend it if you want to. <clears throat> and you, you just mix your paint right in here. And this clips on. And these last an amazingly long time too. And, if, and when it gets empty, you can refill it with your tube colors or with um, a new pen. You can buy these individually from Windsor and Newton. And that's um, how you use a pan set. And these come in different types of models and they are, um, there are even really large ones with lots of colors, but, but these colors will get you a really long way. And I think in Canada, these cost maybe 40, maybe $50, something like that. Okay. Um, I also wanted to show you, this is my favorite palette that I use the most. This is also a type of a travel palette, but you buy it with no paint in it. It's just the plastic palette itself. And you fill it with your colors that you want. And so this is the palette that I actually use the most. And it is small enough that I can fold it up and put it in a bag and take it with me. But it's big enough that I have nice big mixing areas here. This is probably about 10 by I don't know, 12 inches, 14 inches, something like that. <clears throat> so it actually has a really nice room for mixing. And that's probably one of the reasons why I use it the most, even just at home. So yeah, you just put your colors in, you let them dry. You can use it straight out of the tube as well, but it's just really handy. And you close it up and put it away. So I just want to quickly show you um, one of the ways that you can practice with watercolors. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a brush here. I have some water next to me and I'm going to use this palette. Before I paint, I like to just, I have a old water sprayer here that I spray my paints with. And I just do that away from my paper. And I have some watercolor, I mean some water and paper towel beside me. And we start out with the color. So let's see here, what have I got here? Kind of a denim blue. I had this idea one day that if you really were just starting out with watercolor, you need to get used to using the water and how much water you use and how much paint you use, which is the pigment, we could say. And this is a really easy way you could do that is just by painting some circles on some watercolor paper in any colors that you like because then you get used to mixing your colors i guess i should do that so you can see me here i'm just picking up i think this is permanent rose that i put in here so I'm going to get it with more pigment and just combine it wet and wet with that blue. And this one I'll just paint some on the edge maybe. So I'm just going to make circles and then I'm going to do something different in the circles. Let's put the, the permanent rose just by itself. This is such a pretty color. This was the one that I was showing you 
in this set of three cotton and watercolors here. A burnt orange. This is super fun and you know if you have any watercolors at all I really recommend that you just try this because you'll be amazed at all the different colors that come out and you know and pretty soon you'll learn how to mix watercolors. And this is just, you know, no pressure whatsoever because you're just playing around. Okay, this is called Payne's Gray. It's a dark color that's close to black, but it's actually more like navy blue. Oh yeah, that looks nice with that red. And you can watch the color spread Different colors will granulate into other colors in different ways. Now, I don't really care for that, how I had a little gray in my brush and it mixed into my yellow and just made it kind of dirty. So what I'm doing now is I'm using a, a thirsty brush and picking it up on my brush. Okay, and now we'll try and get a cleaner yellow. This is quinacridone red. Uh, what if I put it with quinacridone fuchsia? Such a beautiful fuchsia. Oh, and then it doesn't spread very much. And yet when I put Plain quinacridone red, it spreads more. Every color is different that way, how it reacts with other colors. Okay, let's put some ultramarine blue. That's probably my favorite blue. And I'm going to leave that white space open there and what should I put in there maybe this azo green Now I'm just going to put plain water here and let this run together. Oh yeah. And because I like that, I'm going to lift out some paint with my brush so that it has a lighter area. Oh, now it's kind of 
of starting to look like the earth. <laughs> Let's put a little bit more hazel green. Okay, now Prussian blue, also one of my favorites. Oh, what if I put quinacridone red in there? Oh yeah, it pushes out pretty good too. This is quinacridone purple. Pushes, pushes away the purple. Now I wonder what will happen if I paint an overlapping circle here. into the yellow, but the yellow is pushing into the purple. <laughs> Let's try a cobalt blue. Let's see if that, what that does. Oh, the yellow pushes into the cobalt blue. Now I'm going to put plain water next to this and show you, this is called a color pull. So I'm putting plain water into a circle and look how that wet blue, I barely touched it and it ran in. Now let's see if what happens here. Oh yeah, very nice. And this one's still wet. Why don't we try that one too? Pretty. Okay, let's try. Lemon yellow. That's a very cool yellow, whereas the other yellow I was using, Indian yellow, is very warm. So this is a really fun way of practicing with watercolor. You could make any shapes you want. You could overlap them. You could leave them separate. You could change to making a whole page of squares. And just experiment because you're gonna learn what the colors do. You're gonna learn what colors you can mix with the colors that you have. Um. Okay.
Okay, well, this has been lots of fun. Um, I'm going to have to get going, but I just wanted to thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you give this a try if you have some watercolor paint. If you do have more questions for me, um, send me a message. I have my new watercolor course coming out. It's been released for pre-order today and um, I will put the link in the comments of this video if you want to go and check it out for more information. We start on November 3rd which is pretty soon. It's in about a little over a week, about uh, 14 days maybe. and. Uh, if we go for six weeks and uh, once a week we have a tutorial and we'll have a couple of live sessions together as well and it's just going to be lots of fun and it's geared towards beginners and intermediates and uh, yeah if you would like to know more about that send me a message or, or check out the link and uh, we'll talk to you soon bye bye